Okay, before I just jump into this, um, one of the great things that I learned and that I want to pass on is a little background information. And, uh, and that's one of the things that has always been a blessing for me is to be able to relate to uh, the people in the Bible uh, as real people, as human beings. Because so many times we put them up on pedestals, and, uh, and, uh, and which they deserve um, many times, but uh, I can, I can, um, it's more, it, it, I feel more heartfelt when I can identify with their day-to-day -day kind of living and stuff. And so uh, I love to get information like that. And uh, the first thing I'd like to do is explain or give a definition of gospel. You know, um, the, the word itself means good news. It comes from a Greek word, which is euangelion, and uh, that translates to good news. Uh, the other uh, word that uh, it came from, when, when, when the uh, Bible was translated into English, uh, the English had a word called Godspell, and Godspell is an old English word, and it means good news. So Gospel is basically, uh, for the early Christian uh, writings, that tell about the life of uh, Jesus Christ, and, uh, and it's the good news mm -hmm. of the Gospel. Yeah. So if you ever hear that, and in fact, there's a good news Bible, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's right. So that's basically where the, the beginning of the word comes from. The other thing about that history, too, is uh, I mentioned uh, it came Greek, a Greek word. Uh -huh. um, in early, uh, early ancient times, uh, written language was very, I don't want to say rare, but not many people could read or write. Right. Right. And so the, the, the predominant languages during this time uh, for the Jewish people was Aramaic, Hebrew, uh, Latin from the Romans, and Greek from the Greek, Greeks. Right. And um, the other thing about it is the fact that uh, Israel was, uh, was occupied by Rome. Rome was the, the, the United States of that ancient time. It, it was the, the majority of the known world. In fact, you all, can you all see this map up here? They, uh, um, they ruled you can't Asia, find the board. all the way over here, first part of Africa, and that was the largest uh, uh, power in the world. And because of Rome's uh, progressiveness, uh, they didn't, their soldiers weren't just soldiers. Uh, they were carpenters, they were teachers, they were builders, they were architects. And so everywhere they went, they built walls, they built cities, they, and uh, um, you may have heard that old expression, you're not worth your salt. Mm -hmm. Well, that comes from the fact that sometimes the Roman soldiers were paid with salt, because salt was such a commodity and so hard to get that it was very valuable. So that's where that expression comes from. But the point I want to make about the Romans is they built roads. Yeah. And uh, um, the timing of Jesus Christ coming into the world was, uh, we can look back and, and see now how perfect that timing was. Because there's another expression that says, all roads lead to Rome. Well, if they all lead to Rome, or everywhere you're going, you're going out, you're going from Rome. So it made it possible for travel. Travel was much more, much easier. Uh, and if you think about it, it's the Olympics, a marathon. That's the way information was, was carried. You know, kings and emperors and whatnot, you had somebody that would run 26 miles and give the message to somebody who would run 26 miles and give the message to somebody who would run 26 miles. So that's how information got passed along. You put a runner out there and they ran. Well, when the roads came in, it made it much easier for the horses and the carriages and all that. So. So that made it easier for the word of God to be spread throughout the kingdom. Um, and then the political structure. Um, 
several things that will come into play. The first thing is, like I said, the Romans occupied the land. They, they were the, the, uh, the big wigs. But they allowed, because they had so many different uh, countries and languages and all that, they allowed the people to judge uh, and to uh, rule themselves. So what they would do would be to appoint a governor. Um, and, and, and Punctious Pilate, we all know him, he was, he was the governor of, of, uh, of Jerusalem, of one of them. And uh, um, a king like King Herod was the king of the Jewish people. Right. But they also had the Sanhedrin, right. which, was, which is like, uh, I would compare it to Congress in the United States. And like Republicans and Democrats, they had Pharisees and Sadducees. And the Pharisees uh, believed in resurrection. And the Sadducees did not believe in resurrection. The Pharisees were more by the law, written word. And, uh, uh, and so, anyway, you can see there where the divide comes from. Anyway, when it came to decisions to be made, um, the Sanhedrin uh, uh, did not have the authority to put somebody to death. So that's where Rome came from. And that's why I'm getting ahead of myself, but uh, you all know the story. Um, and then there's one more thing I want to mention before I start getting into Matthew, and that's the Nicene Council. Councils, because there were two. Um, the early Christian church uh, held the first council in Nicaea. Um, in a town that is now known as Iznik in northwest Turkey. Uh, the Roman Emperor Constantine called this uh, council in 325 AD, and he was trying to settle a dispute that was caused by uh, Arian views of the Trinity. And Arian was a priest in Alexandria, Egypt, and he believed that Jesus Christ was not the same essence or substance as God. And also, um, there were hundreds of um, books of the Bible. So at this Nicene Council, they all they were all these religious people from all over the Roman world. They came to settle down to settle what books should be in the Bible and which ones should be left out, and to settle this question about about uh, the substance of Jesus. Um, was he was he uh, uh, the essence of God or the substance of God? Well, the council adopted this, the so-called Nicene Creed, uh, which declared that God and Jesus Christ were of the same essence. Uh, and they also fixed the time for observing Easter. And the reason I say Nicene Council is because there was a second one. And the second one uh, was called by the Empress Irene uh, of the Byzantine Empire. Uh, and her son Constantine. This is a different Constantine than the other one. And that was in 787 AD. Uh, the emperor at the time was Leo, Irene's husband, but he died. And had, but he had forbidden the use of images for any religious purpose. Uh, and he, he, he saw that as idolatry. Uh, we, we see today that it has kind of moved into that. We, the Catholic Church oftentimes is accused of that because of the statues and the, and then the pictures and the saints and all. But, uh, but uh, they decided at this second council uh, that uh, um, they made a decree that established principles governing the veneration or honoring of images. So those are the two Nicene councils. So into this, into this historic mix, um, comes Jesus Christ. And uh, um, after his resurrection, after his death and resurrection, it was up to the disciples to spread the word, to carry the message, to carry the good news. Um, and the first one is Matthew. And uh, I'm going to read you a little information about Matthew. Well, we're going to put our Have you ever read 
a sequel to a novel without having read the original story. Trying to pick up the storyline without a transition can be difficult. The Gospel of Matthew serves as such a transition. It connects the story of the Old Testament with the story of the New Testament, helping us to understand how the life and teaching of Jesus built upon what had come before. Uh, Matthew was written by um, Matthew, who was also known as Levi. Um, Matthew was a tax collector who became one of Christ's 12 disciples. And if you remember when I was talking about the stru political structure, uh, tax collectors were, were hated by the Jewish people. Oh, yeah. And they were hated because they were working for the Roman right. government. Right. And what the way it was set up was that the tax collector would pay Rome the taxes that they owed. And then they would overcharge right. the Jewish people, and that's how they became rich, and that's how they made their money. And Matthew was just like that. He was that's one what they're doing now. That's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ain't nothing changed. You know, it's the same. Ain't nothing changed. Uh, and so, so, uh, uh, he, so he wasn't a very well liked person by the Jewish people. And I, and I, I need to say this too. Um, Matthew was a was a Hellenic Jew. Hellenic means Greek. So he, he had he he his messages basically were to the Greek Jews to come into the fold with Jesus Christ. And uh, you'll you'll to, when I get to the others, you see each one of them kind of spoke to a different kind of population. So the, and that's where many times people say that why aren't the stories the same? Because they're appealing to a different right. culture, a right. different right. background. Right. So, but the stories are the same. Um, so why was why was Matthew written? Uh, it was to offer an irrefutable proof that the long-awaited Jewish Messiah had come to inaugurate God's kingdom on earth. Um, Matthew wrote this book, his book, uh, around A.D. 70. Um, although some people believe it may have been written in the 50 or 50s or 60s. It was primarily for the Jewish readers who offered a persuasive account of the good news of Jesus, citing Old Testament evidence that supported the claims believers had been making about Jesus. One of the things to, to look for in, in the book of Matthew is to notice Matthew's frequent use of the Old Testament and how uh, his Jewish orientation flavors his description. For example, he frequently uses son of David instead of son of God as in the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. One of Matthew's major themes is the kingdom of heaven. And note that Jesus' teachings about what it means to be a citizen of that kingdom. Um, now, one of the things that I put down here, and I'll just touch on it right now, mm -hmm. um, is that there were uh, five major um, themes in Matthew. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is what those five themes were. It was the Sermon of the, Sermon of the Mount, and that can be found in chapters five through seven. Mm -hmm. uh, the commissioning of the 12 apostles, mm -hmm. you can find that in chapter 10. <laughs> the parables uh, about the kingdom, mm -hmm. and that's in chapter 13. Uh, a discourse on the church, or talking about what the church is, is about and should be about, mm -hmm. uh, is chapter 18. And then the Olivet Discourse, which is chapter 23 through 25. And, and the Olivet Dis Discourse is just a name they came up with, which basically is simply to, to uh, inform the followers of Jesus that uh, it's, it's a warning that, uh, to his followers that you will suffer tri tribulation and persecution before the ultimate triumph of the kingdom of God. So that's one of those are one of the things that Matthew is, is covering and talking about. Um, it's also found in uh, Mark 13 and in Luke 21. Okay, Matthew was was a, a Galilean. He was born a Galilean. Uh, again, as I said, he was a tax collector. He spoke Aramaic and he spoke Greek. Of course, as I, you know, his fellow Jews uh, did not like him for collaborating with the, the Romans. 
He portrays Jesus as a savior and a king. Uh, in fact, the phrase kingdom of heaven is used over 32 times in the book of Matthew. Um, he was concerned with teaching Christians who were new to the faith uh, and missionaries and the body of Christ in general. So we can we can draw we can gain information about the life of Christ and uh, Christ's purpose in, uh, in reading him today because he's teaching all of us these things. Um, okay, and so what I did was picked out some some of the highlights of. Matthew, and uh, I want to leave that open to discussion if you all have any discussion about it. The first thing is we see is it, it comes right off the bat in Matthew 1, and, uh, and, and that's the genealogy of Jesus. Mm -hmm. okay. um, now, I don't, the, other, the other thing I learned in, in, in this, uh, in the um, Life Christian University, is that, you know, they didn't carry around IDs. So they didn't have a driver's license or anything like that. Uh -huh. What they did was they would tell you who their father was, who their father's father was, all the way back to David or back to Adam. And so that's the genealogy. That's how they identify themselves. And uh, um, I, I might add that this genealogy here is from Joseph's line. And so this is uh, Jesus' uh, genealogy on his father's side. A uh, an, an important point here is that if you look at uh, verse 11, and that says, And Josiah, the father of Jeconiah, and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. Well, there was a problem with Jeconiah. He was an idol, idol worshiper, and so uh, that's where the line, the lineage to David was cut off on his father's mm -hmm. side. You will note, well, I, I, when I get there, if you still know, <laughs> and that's in Luke. So when we get to Luke, you'll see Mary's lineage, the other side, mm -hmm. and uh, that one, uh, Luke goes all the way back to Adam, mm -hmm. where this one only goes back to Abraham. Um, that one is the one that is the shows where Jesus uh, is a descendant of David, and so and, there, and there's nothing wrong with the lineage. So, um, that was that was important um, for Matthew to include. Um, then you know, then our next uh, stories are about the birth the baptism, and the temptation of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think we all know the stories, and their importance, you know, um, uh, the fact that it was a virgin birth, um, that the angels came and spoke to Mary and spoke to Joseph, mm -hmm. and that they, they accepted um, the fact that this was from God and of God. Um, you know, I... I Tried to put myself in that position and think, okay, you're engaged to somebody, and they come and tell you, well, they're pregnant, but you know, <laughs> it's yeah, God's child, that. it's mm -hmm. not yours. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, that that takes a lot of heart, a lot of faith. Yeah. But yeah. they, but they, no baby without. Oh, you, you, oh, know, you know, absolutely. Without. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, without. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, um, but throughout throughout. Um, the story of Jesus, the, the, the early lifetime, um, we see where divine intervention watches over Jesus mm -hmm. and Joseph and Mary mm -hmm. because they're told to leave mm -hmm. because Herod wants to kill every child of, of year, two years and under. Um, the the uh, fact that they were told to go back. Yes. I'd like to make a point. It also shows where um, <clears throat> where stepfathers come in because technically that's what he was. Mm -hmm. He was Jesus' stepfather. He was not his biological father, right. but he still loved Jesus just like he was his own. Mm -hmm. 
you know, so you think about that, like in the age that we are in now, I know when I was coming up, it was just uncommon for, you know, you to have a stepdad, or, you know, for the, what they call blended families. Blended families were really uncommon, you know, but in, in the 70s, when I, I was born in the 70s, so, you know, when I went to school and somebody was saying, my stepdad, I was like, you know, that's something, you know, it was like something I had never heard of, mm -hmm. you know, but really and truly, that's, that's what Joseph was. Yeah. You yeah. know, but he still loved Jesus as if he was his very own child because he did not foster Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I think that, that vision from the angel, you know, kind of settled things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it settled. Yeah, ain't no doubt about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God intervenes and God speaks. That settles everything. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You just know that you know that you know. Amen. 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 All right, and uh, um, so as he can, Matthew continues in the narrative, uh, he talks about Jesus' baptism, so that brings in John the Baptist, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the temptation of Jesus. Um, so that, that's the beginning of Matthew, tells us, it's, it sets the stage for that, and tells us those things. Um, Matthew 5 and 17, I'd like to read that. What did you say it again? Matthew 5 and 17. 5 and 17? Mm-hmm. And uh, it begins, uh, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Mm -hmm. Here, um, it's being announced to the world that this is the Messiah. Mm -hmm. You know, the, that, that however many years, hundreds of thousands, well, thousands of years of history uh, before Jesus' birth and in the Old Testament where they talked about a Messiah, it's being, we're being told and let known that this is that Messiah. Mm -hmm. That this child has been born and that he's fulfilling the law. That's, That's the right. important thing. Mm -hmm. That he is fulfilling all of those prophecies about the Messiah. Mm -hmm. um, many of the Jews, the, fa the Sar uh, Pharisees and Sadducees, had a hard time with that. They couldn't accept that. Yeah. Um, and so that's where the rub came from. And that's where they began to uh, plot. And, 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 you know, he's changed them. This man's going to change everything. You know, we've got, we've got it pretty good here. we got our own thing, and they've got the Sadducees got their thing, and, and we're running things. Uh, also, they believe very much so that uh, the Messiah was going to be a conquering so they, they thought that this person was, uh, uh, was going to come as a savior and rule over the Romans and conquer the Romans and, and, and then the Jewish people would, would, would uh, rule everything. Um, so, but he, he wasn't, he didn't come like that. And, uh, and so it was really difficult for, uh, for them. Um, I jumped past the Beatitudes and I meant to talk about them. <laughs> I meant to talk about them uh, because I wanted to get that point in. But this is this is part of what turned things upside down. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in in the Jewish or yeah, in the Jewish culture, that's you know the, the political the way things were set up. And I might add too, it was more than just uh, um, the Jews. There were other sects of, of religion. Oh, yeah. You know, there were Gnostics and there were uh, several other who, who uh, deviated from the main Jewish religion. Um, so so uh, um, when Jesus came along with these the, uh, Beatitudes, it knocked the normal way of life, which was people who were seen as successful and rich and, and with money and with land and whatever, they were considered closer to God. Mm -hmm. They were considered uh, 
blessed by God. Mm -hmm. and, and now here's this man coming in and he says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for mm -hmm. theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So none of that stuff has to do with material Amen. things. Amen. It doesn't have anything to do with Amen. my car, my horse, my donkey, my land, my house. Right. None of it. But those are the gifts and the rewards of the Spirit. And everybody can have that. Everybody can have that. And that's what that's what threw things so off for everybody, mm -hmm. uh, for those who were in power at the time. Even even today, if you can, people still relate wealth and and you know, financial gain to somebody being right with God. Mm -hmm. That is so far that from the so truth. Mm -hmm. There are a whole lot of people, even in church, they got a whole lot of money, but God ain't got nothing to do with all of that. Right. I mean, we got pastors that preach, you know, this thing about you know the. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, all that and getting money and this, that, and the other. Yeah, God wants you to have, but that's not the main focus. The main focus is to be poor in spirit, okay? The main focus is, is to uh, do the things that, you know, with having a pure heart before God and all that. Because you remain then, humble. Yeah, that, that's what Jesus talked about all the time, humble. being humble. But a lot of these people now, they got all this wealth and got this, that, and the other. They ain't humble. <laughs> not by no means. They ain't humble. But you know what? That's so humble that they ain't, they ain't even got the wealth. They just got a nice paying job. Well, that, that's and now you, you know, you about can't tell people nothing anymore. We confuse God's blessing with what God really wants us to have. Yeah, God's going to bless you. That, that's fine. But the focus is not the blessing. The focus is the blesser. Come on. That's, that's what our focus is. It's on, it's on Christ. Amen. And if you My live God. right, if you live right and do right, the blessing is automatic because he already said he's going to bless his people. Are you, Dr. Man, let me ask you a question. What did the Lord tell you Sunday? What was that you said? Ooh. Sunday you spoke. Did God say you can do uh, more? About the mind your own business. About mind your own business. But then he told you something personally. He said he'll leave you here if you do what? Oh, <laughs> as long as I do what he put me here to do, Amen. he'll leave me. Amen. See, that's what a blessing is. I, it, 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 it's not the Reward someone is to bless her, mm -hmm. Jesus. That's the thing about it. Ours is to do what He tell us to do, Amen. and the, and the blessings come because we do what He tell us. Amen. That's what that's all about. Amen. 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 You're going to be here a while. You're going to be here a while. This is just going over here, is a no. Is that right? You're going to work that out? Pastor, you got some blessings. Go ahead, David. Go ahead. Well, I was going to go back to that fulfillment of the law. Amen. About Jesus telling them that he's here to fulfill the law, That's not to tear the law down. That's right. Well, Matthew 21 7 mm -hmm. uh, gives you some examples of that, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if you talk about uh, riding in on the donkey, mm -hmm. let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, this is uh, leading up to Jesus coming into. Uh, Jerusalem for his triumphant entry on Palm Sunday. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. Eight, a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Nine, the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Uh -huh. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Uh -huh. Well, if 
that is that's taken literally from the Old Testament. That's right. And uh, if uh, let's see, we went there. Uh, the uh, the other point about that is that uh, Jesus didn't uh, literally sit on both. Uh, Jesus sat on the colt while his mother apparently walked alongside. Mm -hmm. Luke nineteen and thirty five. Also speaks to about this. Mm -hmm. um, that expression of placing your coat down and, and putting branches down, mm -hmm. that that's uh, that's like the red carpet treatment yeah. that we have today. Exactly. That was to honor um, the greatness. Uh, honoring and in this case, in this sense, honoring the fact that Jesus is followers and disciples and the people who had been out to hear him uh, were recognizing him as a, a special person of honor. And, and that's the way they received him into the city. Mm -hmm. And there was a reason for that. Jesus said that he didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill them. Mm -hmm. Now if you think about it, the law and the prophets they had foretold Jesus coming long before. Mm -hmm. So he didn't come to destroy anything. He came to fulfill God's word because they were talking about him. From, from way back up until Isaiah, up until you know, all of them prophesied about him. Even the cult, even riding on the cult, that was prophesied. Mm -hmm. If you look at all the prophecies of Jesus, Lord have mercy, the Old Testament is just full of, I mean, just full of the different things that were coming to pass. Now here the man is, Right here in your face, and all of this stuff that has been prophesied is now coming to pass day by day, step by step. I have wondered whenever every situation there was the Old Testament scripture that some prophet or some whoever God spoke it through, and here it is. Mm -hmm. Now the ones who knew the law, the ones who knew the prophecy, they they found it to be you know so because it's right here fulfilled in our face. But the ones that didn't know, talk about the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were trying to do their own thing, so they was like. Wait a minute, you know, they, they're trying to fight against the very thing that God said that was, was coming to pass. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he, he came to fulfill, and he did fulfill. Amen. The devil was mad. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 Yeah, Amen. Oh, he was mad. Uh, and then moving on to chapter 6, mm -hmm. um, he gives us the Lord's Prayer. Uh -huh. yeah. Matthew. Matthew 6. Yes. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, six and five I'd like to read um, to begin reading. Because he says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. Six, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Seven, and when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Mm -hmm. Eight, do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. That's right. And uh, I was, this past weekend, I was uh, uh, flipping through the camera on the TV, and the war room was on. Uh, and I caught it, it was about five minutes into it, and I, I, cause I watched the whole thing again, <laughs> and, and uh, that's exactly what that reminded me of, mm -hmm. was the fact that I have my place that I can go to, That's right. and, and, you know, the, the, the word talks about uh, changing, making a, a, a new man, a new mind, and, and that's what happened with uh, the woman in her prayer closet, uh, because of these things she had put down in there, um, she got a new mind. And, and he and her husband even recognized it, and that's what kind of caught him off guard, because why aren't you mad at me? Why aren't you screaming and yelling like you were? Why aren't you? Mm -mm. I, left, I put it in God's hand, Amen. and that's where my trust is. I got that uh, DVD, anybody want to borrow it? Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> Watching it a couple times. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, I came across it today, as a matter of fact. Oh my God. Anybody want to borrow it? And then, and like, like, like the disciples, that's the next thing I was kind of going to, 
uh, about passing it on. That's what the elderly lady said, you know, the more wanted me to give it to somebody and who gave me you. Mm -hmm. Now you go, you go and you pass it on to somebody. And that's what Jesus basically said to the 12 disciples. Uh, and, and is that chapter 10 or verse 10? Chapter 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, chapter 10, where Jesus sends out the 12. Mm -hmm. He says uh, in verse 1, he called the 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits right. and to heal every disease and sickness. Two, these are the names of the 12 apostles. Uh, first, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Mm -hmm. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Zealot and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. Five, these 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Six, go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. Seven, as you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Eight, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, Freely you have received, freely give. Mm -hmm. Now, do not take along any gold or silver or copper in your belts. Ten, take no bag for the journey, or extra tunic, or sandals, or staff, for the worker is worth his keep. Mm -hmm. Eleven, whatever town or village you enter, search for some worthy person there, and stay at his house until you leave. Twelve, as you enter the home, give it your greeting. Thirteen, if the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. Fourteen, if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that home or town. Fifteen, I tell you the truth, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. Sixteen, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. So that's Jesus um, letting his disciples know he wants them to go out into the world. To take, the good, take the good news out to, 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 to the Jews first. That's right. um, and, and if there's no one, if no one wants to listen or wants to hear, shake the dust off your sandals and, and move on. Move there's on. always there's, there's going to be somebody that does. That's right. And it happens. And you just can't even be mad. Right. You know, because a part of you wants to be, you know, upset about it, but it, it happens. And it's just all for like, it's like growing pains, too, in the spirit of God. Y'all don't even understand it when, <laughs> when um, Pastor Paul said, I just watched you, I just watched you grow. Like, I'm going to tell you that right. Don't have faith. Right. And when I tell you that, I've been, I've been shocking myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, because what I want to say, I don't say, do y'all not know I've been up at like 3.30 in the morning? I've been corresponding back with Pastor Jimmy. Y'all know I sleep <laughs> at night. <laughs> <laughs> we have been like corresponding. We didn't this morning, but yeah. the last two mornings, I think months, I shot yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, what's like, you doing up this hour? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I know that he's just doing something. And to the degree where even my, my papa was just like, are you okay? And I'm like, Yes, ma'am. I'm okay. I'm okay because I mean I know that that God is, is doing something, and the thing about it is, it's just like just resting in, mm -hmm. you know. And and when you can rest in God, it's it's unexplainable. You can't even explain how you're feeling, although although everything is going on around you. But when you're just resting in Him, Amen. you're resting. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's 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 my prayer. You know what I. When I let stuff get in my head and my head wants to start running, it's like, I said, Lord, give me the peace of Jesus that I can rest in the arms of the Lord. And I say that over and over. And before you know it, I'm, I'm going to sleep. I wake up the next morning and I'm refreshed. I'm when I say sleep, I mean just turn out just to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, just to sleep. Amen. Just out. Amen. Like, Lord, I thank you. You were talking about how. Jesus had his disciples to go out and spread the word. That's the mission of the church. 
That's what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. It has to change. It's just that nowadays we've changed it, yeah. okay, to something else. Instead of going out, we want the people to come in. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's good that they do come in, but our job is to go out. Mm -hmm. Jesus has not changed that. And the pastors and preachers, not all of them, some of them doing it, but a whole lot of them are not doing it. And we need to teach the people how to, which is how to win souls, and send them out. And we, man, when I was in California, Lord have mercy. That full gospel was the name of the church. I'm telling you, this pastor would, I mean, he had a team that he would send people out 20 or 30 at a time. I mean, they'd meet in the park, they'd pray, and they'd break off in the team. They'd go out in this whole neighborhood. I mean, they'd be like across the street from each other, keep, you know, eye contact with each other. But they'd knock on doors and talk to people, and folk would get saved right there, some of them. And they would have people coming to church, I'm talking 20 and 30 and 40 at a time. Mm -hmm. That next time, we had prostitutes, we had drug dealers, drug addicts, we had yeah. all drugs and wine over there. I mean, folk coming to give their life to Christ, they got so to the point that they had to start having two services. My God, God, my God, God. That church, Lord. I left that church. Uh, there's a long the whole story. My about God. The church was a it, it, it was a regular sized church, you know, about like Mount Zion or something, you know, but then we went and bought a, 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 a building. And the building was so big you could throw a football from one end to the other and not even hit the dirt or anything. That's how big it was. When they converted it into a church, they were starting to have when we started doing all this, we started having two services. And when I left there, they were looking for another building because it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. My God, my God. And pastors were coming from different states wanting to learn how to go out mm -hmm. and what witness for, for what this man was doing, you know. And he was showing the people, they, like I said, they were going out winning 20 and 30 and 40 souls at a time. But you know, but that's your key word, though. Like you said, they were taught. Yeah, yeah. they were taught. You know, we can't have people going out here half cop. No, don't know what you're doing. Don't know what you're coming up against. And Dr. Felicia does that. They go out, giving out that water. She, she takes, and and they, they don't. The, the other churches here don't understand what she's doing. They really don't understand what she's doing. When she had, when she had her. Um, her, what was her anniversary or whatever it was at the White House Center? My yeah, and I, I had to leave, but I kind of hated to leave her there by herself because I was afraid they were going to get her because she was telling them what they needed to do and what they were not doing. And, uh, you know, I could feel the vibes from the other churches that was there throwing dots at her, but I had to leave her and I told her father on the way out, you better. You take care of it because I got to go. <laughs> but they don't understand yeah. what she's trying to do. Yeah. yeah, when you when you used to a certain uh, I don't know, I, I want to say a certain teaching or a certain way of doing things, and then somebody comes and tries to tell you the correct way of doing mm -hmm. it. To you it's it's false. I can stand up and tell people how to go out and win, but they'll be like, huh? Because the majority have never been taught how to do it. They don't know how. And if you don't know how, then you have to sit down and learn how. And then when you do learn, you mean, I'm supposed to be doing this all this time, ain't nobody never taught me. That's what you're supposed to be doing. And people are like, wow, you know, more than you but actually you can't do it. just go in people's churches like you know. Mm -hmm. And all the churches that you've been in, nobody's let you teach mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. them. The people have to go out. Have to go out. Because I, I would love to. Oh, it's like when, you, when God gets involved, when, when the Holy Spirit gets involved, and you really start talking to people and watching people and watch them hunger. And they're, they're, I mean, people will call you in the middle of the man, you know that verse you were talking about? Tell me a little more about that. They, they, they want to know. They really do. They're hungry. And some of them have been hurt so bad by trying to go to church. The people didn't know how to handle them, didn't know how to yeah. tell them, you know, they got hurt, they got discouraged. But they're waiting for somebody else to come. And you say them. you would love to know we can do that. Yes, we can have a class, oh, do a I class know. that's convenient oh, for you and whoever else that want. We, yes, people want. Um, well, we could advertise it, even if you're the only one there. Well, I mean, I, I well, you can teach. You know, I mean, because I, and a lot of times people don't come to church because, you know, of guilt. You know what I'm saying? Just bondage. Bondage keeps yeah. people out of church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, we can go and hold a conversation with somebody in Walmart, and you can still get saved in Walmart. Mm -hmm. You can get saved in Walmart, on the street. I've seen people get saved on the trees. In cars, I've seen people get saved in the, in just, we, when I was coming up, we had people get saved in my front yard. In my front yard, right there in Washington Street. Yes, ma'am. You know, and, 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 I, and I, I do believe that, you know, if if you teach a class, I believe people will come because 
And once we, we establish that, then everything else can fall in place. But see, the enemy has him bound. Absolutely. That's why he can't stop doing what he's doing. Absolutely. You can understand, those chains that we keep talking about breaking the chain, them some real chains. They spare yes. the chains, but they're real. They're real. They're real. They're real. That's why they can't stop. Absolutely. And and it need it needs to see how Jimmy comes to mind whenever I'm hearing that because see I know he knows how to deal. I mean I do and he does, but the more the merrier. You know what I'm saying? Because the more Amen. faith that you got, that's a greater. You got to gang up on the devil. I'm trying to tell you, you do. You do. You have to. And and when an individual's like that, man, you really got to send some prayer up and God break them chains Amen. and let God deliver this individual because he is hurting. Yeah. There's plenty of people out there like that. They don't know how to get loose. They want to, they just don't know how. Amen. 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 My God, my God. Amen. Ooh, okay, so we'll move along to the next uh, chapter, which is uh, chapter 11. That's uh, we learn about uh, Jesus and John the Baptist. We, uh, we find out about their background, their history, and we also, again, prophecy is being fulfilled. That one will come in the wilderness who will come before him. Mm -hmm. That was prophesied in the Old Testament. And uh, here it is being fulfilled in the New. Um, Quick question before you go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask this question. Somebody can answer. Was Jesus and John the Baptist related? Yes. Was Jesus and John the Baptist related? Say what now? No cousins because Elizabeth and Mary were cousins. <laughs> okay. That's right. A lot of people were cousins. And they were six months apart. They were cousins. Uh, well, she went to go and meet him. Go. Okay. <laughs> you sit up and tell some people that in church, they're going to be like these friends. What? What you mean they were cousins? She was, no, they were cousins. They were cousins. Yeah. She, was, she was six. Elizabeth was six months pregnant when Mary went to visit her. Mm -hmm. And if you read one more thing about John the Baptist, John was filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother. In his mother's right. home. And that filled his mother's home. Yeah, but well, he was filled. Yeah. And that filled his mother's home. <laughs> <mother's laughs> <mother's laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay. At least. I, I need to throw it out there right now. That's all right. I love it. <laughs> yes, you do. And then, we, and then we can move on to uh, chapter 13, where uh, he introduces the parable. He starts talking in parables. Uh, which is important, and, and just to, to read a little bit more about that, um, why did Jesus speak in parables? Well, on one level, parables were not difficult to understand. Jesus masterfully taught moral principles by using simple down-to-earth illustrations about everyday objects familiar to farmers, fishermen, merchants, and others in his audience. At the same time, the spiritual significance of Jesus' parables seemed obscure or even incomprehensible to those who opposed Jesus or who simply were not attuned to his mission and message. People with ears to hear, those seriously seeking the truth, could dig deeper and find profound spiritual insight. For others, Jesus' parables were little more than fascinating but puzzling riddles. Those who were resistant to his message would not have the interest or the energy to pursue deeper fruit or truth. I'm sorry. Uh, Jesus frequently used parables when speaking to large crowds, but in private he provided his disciples with more detailed explanation. Um, Mark 4, 33 and 34 tell us about that. At this point in Jesus' ministry, it was God's intent that certain secrets of the kingdom be kept somewhat hidden from Jesus' many casual observers, from overzealous but poorly informed supporters, and from outright opponents. Sometimes, however, Jesus did use more direct, non-figurative teaching methods. If you compare that to 5 7, I think we read 5 7. Yeah, 5 7, please. So um, um, it, it mentions there that. A lot of the people didn't understand. There were, there were times when the disciples didn't understand. But when they came and sat together, they could ask and Jesus would explain it to them. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, the first one here on, in 13 is the parable of the sower. Um, he goes back and explains that to them um, mm -hmm. after, after the teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next thing is uh, move on to uh, chapter 17. And we have the transfiguration of Jesus. Okay. Uh, 
after uh, chapter 17, verse 1. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Three, just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, is it, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Five, while he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped him, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Mm -hmm. One of the big questions um, that people have is um, why, why was Jesus transfigured? Uh, the disciples received a glimpse of Jesus' heavenly splendor, mm -hmm. and God's spoken words powerfully reinforced Jesus' identity as the Messiah. Mm -hmm. This was just another example for them uh, to to recognize who he is, and and, and uh, uh, I, I, I well, a lot of times I'm always um, amazed at how they they are exposed to so many miracles. The, the disciples are exposed to so many miracles. They see it with their own eyes, and 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 they have doubt, or they do fear, or just being a natural man, uh, they don't they don't believe him. You know, and, and examples of that is uh, when when Jesus told the disciples to get on the boat and go across the, the, the lake, and there was a storm that came. Well, no, not the storm, but Jesus came walking across the lake, and Peter saw it and said, "Can I walk on the lake too?" And Jesus said, "Come on." And he stepped out and started walking, and then he realized he was walking <laughs> on it. And he started thinking that Jesus had to save him. Yep. Um, another example was uh, the animals there again on the lake when Jesus was sleeping. And uh, the, the storm, you know, everybody, yes, everybody was like, oh, no, no. So <laughs> he, he stood up and, and stopped the wind, stopped the rain. Um, you know, they saw him feed the 5,000. And that was just men. Women and children were there too. Another time, he fed four thousand. Mm -hmm. It just boggles my mind how I when I think about it, you know, looking back and in, in, in hindsight, how could they not? I mean, mm -hmm. just yeah, just give give everything, give anything. Oh, look to what the he fact that he, today. he heals people of cancer, mm -hmm. spares mm -hmm. their lives. Amen. And the next day they, they don't believe again. The next week they still don't believe. It's the same. Or, or, I mean, it's the same thing. I, I, I have been there and wondering what was wrong with these people. But then I have to think about myself, even just me, the thing that God has done to spare mm -hmm. my life. And then a year down the road, I'm like, oh, God, help. <laughs> Um, in those days, Jesus was training his disciples, and of course, with anything else, words are powerful and they're great, but us being human, we have to have visual aids. And this is what God was doing with his disciples. He wasn't only just telling us, he was showing us. Mm -hmm. we, we good to hear, but we better believe what we see. Mm -hmm. And so God was letting the disciples know, not only am I capable of doing this, I'm doing it before your very eyes. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times when Jesus did miracles, a lot of times, when, especially when somebody died or whatever, Jesus had to put the folks out of the room. He had to take them out of the house because their faith wasn't strong enough to believe. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus took, you know, he, whoever he took with him, James, John, whoever it was, he knew their faith was strong enough mm -hmm. and that the person came back to life. And they came walking out, and the people were like in awe because what they were saying, now they now they live. Mm -hmm. So everybody doesn't have the faith, but God was showing them what he not only what he was capable of, but when I finish with you, what you gonna be capable of. Mm -hmm. Because that's what they did later on down the road. Well, we can do the same thing. Our problem is that when God does miracles in our lives now there's a time, it is short lived. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll testify about it in church, but that's it. Once mm -hmm. the church is over with, hey, that miracle is out the window. I mean, but we need to continue yes, to take the things that God has. The word says, let the redeemed yes, of the Lord, Lord say so. Yes. Okay? One of the biggest problems we got is somebody got rid of testimony service in the church, and that put a dampener on a home care with nobody. Mm -hmm. That put a dampener on a whole lot of stuff because when God does miracles and blessings in your life, our job is to stand up and tell what God has done. Amen. So when the person that's trying to believe hears your testimony, what God has done for you, it'll not only go into their hearing, it'll go into their heart. They'll begin to believe also. Mm -hmm. If God's done that for you, then he can do that for me. But we have taken testimony service and turned it into a joke. Mm -hmm. And it's no longer effective like it should be. But you know why one of the reasons why is because people were getting up saying the same thing. That's true too. And the children could repeat Thank you. the uh whole testimony. Exactly. We could. Yeah. Exactly. We was no the whole testimony. Watch yeah. what he get up to say. <laughs> yeah, we repeat the whole testimony. We kind of messed that up. Kind of messed that up. Yeah. So sometimes I'll, I'll ask for testimony. Uh -huh. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah. Rather than just we have every Sunday we have a testifying service, and and I thank the Lord for His love for being here. Thank the Lord for da 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 da. Yeah. And yeah. The Lord yeah. And, and and they sit down. And them kids in the back could stand up and say, word for word. Word for word. Yeah, so sometimes mm -hmm. every now and then we got to have a testimony. Mm -hmm. to it's good to do that mm -hmm. because, especially, and it shouldn't be the same testimony every time. I mean, yeah. if God gave it for you five years ago, that's a good thing, but if you've been testifying that thing for five years, what else has God done? Yeah, in, with, in the past five years. It's like, what else have he done? No, he's not done. You still here? <laughs> <laughs> that's a testimony right now. Yes. People dying every day. <laughs> But I'm still here, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Yes, man. So God, what I'm saying is God gives us visuals of what he does, he, the disciples, so that their faith would be increased. And the same thing with us. Because they carry on the work. And after Jesus went, went away, the disciples, the apostles, were doing the miracles and the, and the things that Jesus, well, he told us that we would. You know, we would do greater work. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and, and, and it's still time for us to continue to do greater work. Greater work. And mm -hmm. Rain and Rain have done some greater work right here. Mm -hmm. Whether people realize it or not, I mean, God has blessed so many times yes. just right here in right. this little atmosphere. Yes. Now, the whole world don't know about it yet, but they're going to. Mm -hmm. Because when these folks go out, they're going out powerful. I guarantee you, they're going, they ain't going to be the average preacher. You can think so if you want to, but I know better. They are not going to be the average Preachers, deacons, whatever is in here, they're going out of here with power. Well, y'all be ready to be looked at all crazy. <laughs> What's wrong with you? What's wrong with that deacon? He don't act like a regular deacon. What's wrong with that with that evangelist? He don't act like a regular evangelist. Y'all been around that Dr. Amanda Price moment, ain't you? That's what y'all mean. Hold your shield. Yes, no. <laughs> Keep on doing what you're doing, Doc. Keep on doing. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. I want to stay here for a while. When I stop, I know. You can't stop, Doc. You can't stop. Stop. <laughs> Now, there's one other thing that, that, that came from this, uh, tr this transfiguration. Uh, the fact that Moses and Elijah came back. Oh, Lord. Now, this was not a seance or an example of reincarnation. No, no. This event linked Jesus to the religious heritage of the Jews. Moses represented the law, mm -hmm. and Elijah represented the prophets. Mm -hmm. So that was part another part of the purpose of that. Um, no, I, I believe that name is Elias. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I believe that name is Elias, E L I A S. Not Elijah. Yeah, not true. Elijah. Elijah. Elijah is Elijah and Elijah. Right. Elijah. But the name you're trying to say is Elias? Uh, I believe Elijah is Elias. I believe. Elijah and Elias. Are they the same person? That's what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Like Saul and Paul was? Mm hmm. Okay. I believe Elias and Elijah, yeah, Elijah. Was, was the second person in the kingdom. And there was a reason for that. Um, okay. I don't know if he's going to get to that as to why they came or why God called them to come. But I mean, was it, a, was it actually a name uh, no, change like Saul and Paul was? Jesus asked them not to say anything to anybody. 
and, and speak on the fact that uh, uh, practical issues may have helped cause uh, this reluctance to popularity. The crowds were already becoming large and unmanageable, and at times Jesus needed to get away. Uh, as an example, Mark 6, 31 and 32. At other times, he'd be firm in leaving one group of people so he could minister to another. Another factor may have been that larger crowds would attract more attention from the religious authorities mm -hmm. that already opposed his ministry. It would, make, it would make sense for Jesus to hide his identity so he would not be arrested before the appropriate time. Jesus had work to finish before going to the cross. Okay. He also needed to spend more time with his disciples who needed his special revelation if they were to learn how Jesus was the Christ. Mark 9, 30, and 31 speaks to that. Faulty ideas about the Messiah were common, common among the people who expected an earthly or militaristic uh, kingdom. It's obvious the disciples did not understand Jesus well enough yet, for at this time, even Peter found it difficult to accept Jesus' prediction of his coming suffering. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When I was looking out, and, 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 and being that as it may, and that is all correct, uh, it, um, Moses and Elijah came to Jesus to talk with him about his death. That's why they were there. A lot of people don't. It's in there. It's in the scriptures. It's, it's you know. A lot of people don't realize it. They didn't just show up just for the sake of showing up. And, mm -hmm. You know, just the party. They no. They they can't. They had a purpose. Mm -hmm. God chose those two to come to the Messiah and talk to him about what he had to go through as far as him going to the cross. Yeah, Jesus knew he had to go to the cross. He knew you know what what all he had to suffer. But even still, God sent these two patriarchs mm -hmm. to talk with the Messiah about what was, I mean, think about it. Two men of God came to talk to the Messiah, but they were talking to him on the earthly plane rather than the heavenly plane. Mm -hmm. He was the Messiah. He was Jesus Christ. But he had to talk to him, per se, on the, on the earthly side. Mm -hmm. Okay. What he had to go through. See also Luke 9 and 31. Mm -hmm. Yep. Moses and Elijah appeared to them. Moses and Elijah appeared to them and spoke to Jesus about his coming death. Right. See also Luke 9, 31. Mm -hmm. The miraculous appearance of Moses and Elijah, Elijah, they call him Elijah, not Elias. Mm -hmm. Two of God's most important leaders of the Old Testament time shows that Jesus was who he claimed to be, God's son. Right. Although God had done miraculous had done miracles through both of these men, such as the parting of the Red Sea in Exodus 14, and sending fire from heaven to burn a water-soaked sacrifice in 13, 17, and 18. Mm -hmm. Their discussion with Jesus was about his coming death, mm -hmm. an event far more important than any other in all of history. Yeah. So, I don't know what Luke 9 is, but you're going to get to Luke. Yeah. I don't want to take you further than you want to go. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so that that's great though because uh, I, I, that part of it I didn't really know, but it, 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 it as far as, as things come in order, the next thing is Jesus predicts his death. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, 1721, Matthew 1721.
faith, that word faith, that's what it takes for, from us. Um, Brother uh, Greer was saying it earlier, we need to see, we need to feel, we need to touch. Mm -hmm. God wants us to take these things on faith. Mm -hmm. But not just by faith alone. This was an eyewitness account. Yeah. He said, the wind and the earth. That's it. They, they, were, they were told that Jesus predicted his death, and then it happened. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to believe it. They didn't believe it until these events took place. And then on the resurrection, um, well, that, I wish I had could find could have found my uh, that Bible that we did where it really broke that down uh, because um, for the for the Christian faith, the resurrection of Jesus is where there's so much um, not confusion, but people really want to want to. Knock that, mm -hmm. knock the fact that he, he, he was resurrected. That's why. That's why uh, the the, the, the uh, guards who were watching the rock were paid to say yeah. that it was moved. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why you know all those stories because the resurrection tells that that's the beginning of our salvation. Mm -hmm. That's when we are really <coughs> remade in the image of God, we, and we become that spirit. We become part of that spirit. And, uh, and so um, the devil tries to knock that down any way he can. And, and, but, but our faith is what he holds on to. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at about faith. Yes, sir. I, I, now, I, I understand what you're saying, but this is the part that gets me. Now, uh, Pontius Pilate and, and all them, they done, they done hung the man on the cross. Okay, he's dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, they done put him in the tomb. But the man is dead. Why are you gonna pay somebody to lie and say if he's hmm. dead, what, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid he's gonna come back to life? Are you afraid that he just might get up out the grave? What's the stand up? You got to pay some. How many people do you know that go to a grave site, tell somebody a lie that somebody done moved him? Man, come. So they, they had a just in case. <laughs> <laughs> just in case he do get up out. <laughs> and that's what's funny about it. It's pretty not comical, but it is. Because they were afraid that Jesus was really going to do this. Yeah. Uh -huh. And just in case we're going to put somebody there, y'all tell a lie that he moved about. Yeah, but you know what? We, they did have eyewitness account because the angel was sitting there and told them that he is not Amen. here. He is risen. Amen. And boy, well, you know when the angel told them, man, the people like to, well, I don't know about them, but I about went crazy, man. Look, dog, Jesus gone. He ain't here. Man. And then they did see him yeah. many times after. Yep, yep, there's so many times. Yep. And the last thing to wrap this up is in, in, in Matthew is the Great Commission. Oh my. Which is Matthew yeah. 28 to 16. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm trying to say, I'm going to find what you were talking about. You wanted to find. Uh, we had a, we had a, it was a black hardcover Bible that we bought from the school. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, it really broke down. The crucifixion, the resurrection, and all of that. And I, I, I. Did you have it? Yes. I, I hope I didn't. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Oh, man. I got to find it. He invented it, though. He
Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 19. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 20. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. 